So here we go with the high heat perfumes. Now, this is my natural kind of stomping ground in terms of perfumes. I've always been someone who really loves watery, fresh, fruity, kind of natural, yummy smelling perfumes and the kind of perfumes that you can wear literally at any time of the year, but are particularly good for when you just, it, it's so hot that you can't wear heavy perfumes. And I, um, all of my signature scents pretty much have, have been that kind of perfume. I just, I find them very easy to wear. They feel very natural on me. I also, because I don't like, I, you know, I like skin scents. I don't like things that are massively strong unless I'm in a very specific mood, if it's the dead of winter or if it's like super sultry evening kind of perfumes. I like the kind of stuff that people are going to be wearing at this time of year. And so I have a huge amount of perfumes that are good for this time of year. So I figured this would be a good time as we are head first into a heat wave in the UK. It's absolutely crazy hot for this time of year in the UK. And we're about to have, well, we've had a warning, actually, a government extreme weather warning, which is very unusual for us. So I think tomorrow or Tuesday is like a 40 degree day. We're then probably going to get a massive storm. So I thought I'd at least try and get the first one up on Monday. Um, and then I'm probably going to do a couple more because I, like I said, I have so many perfumes, way too many for one video. So this is part one and we're starting with an absolute banger, which is such a bargain. You can pretty much get Adidas Get Ready Eau de Toilette um, for under a fiver normally. This one I think is a 30, it's a 30 or a 50, ah, it's a 50 mil. And this is just a fabulous watermelon, watermelon, a watermelon perfume. I sprayed a bit on my arm just to remind myself so I'm not making this up but I mean the notes in this are top notes of watermelon, grenadine and orange, middle notes of sugarcane and lotus, base notes musk, cedar and amber and this smells like the watermelon, grenadine and sugarcane specifically, tiny bit of orange but generally speaking this is like a sugary watermelon smell. Now this one has been compared to uh, L'Impertinence, I think it's called, by Dolce & Gabbana. Now that perfume, I think, is the modern one anyway, the modern version, not the one that has the number three on it, which I believe has kiwi in it. But the, the current formulation of it, which doesn't have the three above it, I, that's like strawberry and watermelon. And some people love that perfume, some people hate that perfume, but this one's been compared to it. And if if you want a really nice, cheap and cheerful, quite lovely watermelon perfume that doesn't really have much else going on in it this is brilliant it's great for the heat it's so sweet and yummy i love this one so that's my first so adidas get ready for her obviously mmm it smells so delicious now then oh well you can't go wrong with this at this time of year this is clean fresh laundry and lavender oh fresh now this one it's literally exactly what it says. It smells like clean, fresh laundry. I'm not gonna lie, it's got a bit of a Fabrice vibe to it, but that's not bad at this time of year because there's nothing wrong with smelling clean, fresh, and like you just laundered your clothes. So I love this one, it's very easy to wear. It obviously isn't massively long lasting because it's an eau fresh, but I really wanted to put this one in because you can still get this right now on um, Direct Cosmetics and it costs like five or six pounds for 175 mil. So it's an absolute bargain. It's an absolute classic. The um, notes in this one, although I'm not really sure you can recognize any of these, but altogether, you might have to trust me, it smells like freshly laundered clothes and you know a lavender vibe as well but it's got fruity notes and pineapple in the top notes the middle notes are lavender green grass orchid night blooming jasmine and star anise base notes are musk tonka bean amber precious woods patchouli you can't spell patchouli i think the tonka is really just stopping this from going into the kind of screechy like dry powdery um that kind of like laundry detergent smell it smells much fresher, cleaner and more fluffy, I think, than that. Um, you don't really smell woods particularly, I don't think. I, you know, again, it. I don't think you'd pull out, with the exception of the lavender, I don't think you'd pull out anything from this, from those notes that you're like, oh yeah, I can really smell that. It's it's flowery and kind of clean and laundry-ish, fluffy, really easy to wear, really nice. Um, yeah, so that's an absolute classic. Now, another one, 
that I've chosen quite specifically because you can still get these tester bottles on again direct cosmetics for around about five pounds for 100 ml so these are eau de toilettes again not the longest lasting however at this time of year when it's really hot really nice pick me up really nice fresh smell but um you know you can just keep reapplying it if you if you fancy but it's really good if you just want to go out of the house smelling yummy you know so this one is harajuku lovers and this is the uh, wicked style music this one smells like Daisy by Marc Jacobs and also therefore a little bit like Chanel Chance O'Tondra. So yeah, um, yeah, that's one of the reasons I chose this because I think those are both perfumes that are famously pretty good in hot weather. This one's very light. It's kind of a nice, easy to wear, fruity floral. It's not going to be challenging. It's not going to bother anyone, but it's also not going to cost you huge amounts of money the way that those two perfumes do so it's a really good way of getting a very nice light summery scent that smells like a much more expensive perfume um so the notes in this are top notes of red apple fruity notes bergamot um middle notes fuchsia peony gardenia jasmine base notes musk virginia cedar and amber now i'm also gonna do a shout out because i finally worked out what the other perfume i got recently um smells like so this is Yardley and this one is called Daisy Sapphire. Now I've also got Rosy Ruby. That one reminds me of something as well. I can't, but I, I still haven't been able to work out what it is. This one, on the other hand, as soon as I smelt it, I was like, that really smells like something. I think it smells like something I've got. I didn't realise it smelled like this one. So I don't know why I didn't think about it because it's literally called Daisy Sapphire. So it, it's like a daisy, it's a daisy dupe again. Now that, this one, uh, it lasts longer than this one. And that is because this has a much woodier base. So overall, I like this one better just because it doesn't dry down into so, such a woody perfume. This one, it smells very, very similar but it does last longer and it dries down into something more woody. I've got this one on my hand, but it's not like excessively woody. It's not cedar wood. This one's much more fleeting, slightly more fruity, slightly more girly. This one smells a little bit more mature, but very, very similar. And they both smell very similar to Daisy and Chanteau Tondra. So the notes in Daisy Sapphire, which may I add, is also still, I think, between like five and... Oh, how much was it? Maybe it was like between five and ten pounds. And this one was from Amazon. They didn't have this on Direct Cosmetics. It's the only one of this range that they didn't have. But the notes in Daisy Sapphire are apple, green leaves, little notes of hyacinth, white rose, base notes, musk and sandalwood. And I'm very sure there's way more fruits in this than just apple. As soon as I smelt it, I was like, I can smell the apple, but there's something else there. There's something else fruity. In the same way that when I smell this one, uh, I'm like, oh, there's definitely apples in that, but I don't know. <laughs> um, it, it does list it, but it says red apple specifically. Maybe that's why this is a bit more sweet and girly and a bit more fruity, because this one's a green apple. Um, either way, very different notes very similar perfumes both very affordable both much cheaper than daisy now oh let's do obviously i'm gonna to have to get some aqua colonias in here i'm also going to have to move all this around because otherwise we're not gonna get anything in okay so i have loads of aqua colonias aqua colonias obviously are brilliant for this time of uh, year they are specifically designed to be pick-me-ups for hot weather, that kind of thing. But I have some that are favourites. I've got some that I think are better in really high heat. And, oh, God, this one, I, it's very possible this is my favourite one of all of them, like of all time. This is star fruit and white flowers. Now, I've talked about it a couple of times before. Star fruit and white flowers, they don't give you any notes. However, I would say there's some kind of very delicate jasmine in here, but it's not jasmine in a, in a heady way that gives me a headache star fruit 100 obviously um so it's got a lovely kind of gentle fruitiness it's kind of slightly citrusy maybe slightly melony in a way star fruit's a weird kind of watery fruit that it's kind of hard to describe the scent or taste of it but 
It also, to me, smells like Philadelphia, which is uh, mock orange, which is like a beautiful white spring flowers that grows on bushes in the UK at early springtime. And I just adore this perfume. It's super easy to wear. It's like full signature scent worthy. It lasts an impressively long time. I reckon maybe four hours. And for an, for an eau de cologne, that's really good. It lasts even better on hair and clothes. I just absolutely love this one. I think it's stunning. So that's one of my absolute favourites. And then, oh, I mean, fresh to death. This is probably, with the exception, obviously, of the very citrusy ones, but for me, they lean a little bit woody, masculine-y because they tend to have some kind of woody or masculine spice in, you know. This one, Lycian White Mint, this is very minty, very watery, very fresh, bright. Lycian makes it a bit sweet, slight berry hint, but it's mainly about the mint. Fair enough. Some people say it's slightly like toothpaste and I do get it, but we're on very hot days. Oh my God, I mean, this is just... Honestly, this will be what I'm wearing tomorrow i'm filming this on sunday it's going to be 40 degrees tomorrow i'm i've actually got some time off which means i'm not going to be in my air-conditioned um office and so i'm going to be wanting something that's very very bright fresh and cooling you know and it's going to be that one um so again no notes listed no additional notes but it, it pretty much has what it says like but m m mint is more so than the uh lychee then let's go to, oh, let's do a little tea perfume. You know, I love my tea perfumes if you've watched my channel before. Oh, white tea and ginger lily. It's one of the easiest perfumes to chuck on. I find that with a lot of tea perfumes, you know. Um, green tea by Elizabeth Arden, still by Jennifer Lopez. These are all things that are so easy to chuck on. So good in the high heat. This is incredibly fresh. It's bright and a bit zingy because of that lovely ginger and ginger lily. The notes in this, and you'll see again why it's bright, zingy, brilliant for summer, easy to wear. So top notes, bitter orange, bergamot, neroli, mandarin orange, middle notes, ginger, white ginger lily, violet, base notes, musk, mate, cedar, and tonka bean. It has a sweetness to it, this one. It's a little bit more feminine than the original white tea, and therefore I find it easier to wear. It's just gloriously gorgeously tasty and yummy and i i love i love this perfume if you can get it um i just think it's brilliant i just think it's one of the easiest go-to's that i've got you know okay oh we are running out of space what have we got next oh yeah you guys wouldn't have seen this one before oh gosh it's so big i can hardly get it oh Okay, <laughs> really starting to, I'm hoping I'm not going to drive my focus insane. So this is the Comforter from Lush. Now, this perfume is wild because it smells like Ribena. Okay, so if you are from the UK and you're of a certain age, you might remember that they used to make a, a canned drink, um, a fizzy Ribena, and it was very sherbety, very sweet, beautiful black currant. It was really, really sweet and syrupy, but it was also very light, you know, it was watery. That is exactly what this perfume smells like. Now it's a body spray, but as with pretty much everything from Lush, it's stronger than a lot of perfumes. It lasts longer than a lot of like proper eau de parfums. This one, I'll tell you what's, what the notes are listed, but again, I don't think it's the full story here. So the notes that I can find for the comforter uh, are cassis, uh, cypress and bergamot. There's definitely vanilla in the base of this. It's not excessive, but when it dries down, you lose that kind of sherbetty tanginess a little bit. Oof. Oh, but at, at first, when you first spray this, it is 100% that fizzy Ribena. Oh, it's fabulous. I love this perfume. Um, I do love black currently perfumes. I have one that I'll have actually probably in the next uh, summer perfume video that's a bit more grown up, a bit more perfumey. perfumey. This is straight up edible. It's just but it's a body spray, so it's light. It's not overpowering. It's not cloying. If you don't like sweet sherbetty smells, you won't like it. If, like me, you love sweet sherbetty smells, you're going to love it. 
oh it's beautiful but the more it dries down the more it gets a little bit vanilla -y. um but it's it's brilliant these are 20 pounds for a 200 ml bottle so they're really good value and i just absolutely love this one it's great okay let's put that one over there all right aha so next up we've got this little guy this is a, a Lanvin perfume called Rumour to Rose. Now this guy, again, it's not too bad. You can get this one for like, I think I got this on eBay, so it was probably very affordable, maybe under £15. But if you buy them new, you can get them for about £20 for about 30 mil. Not too bad for Lanvin, as you can see. It's a gorgeous bottle. Really beautiful. Now... You know I like to compare everything to food and drink, right? I just feel like it's sometimes the easiest way to explain what something smells like. This one, I'll read you the notes, but you can pretty much throw them in the bin because it doesn't smell like most of these notes. So the notes for Lanvin Rumour 2 Rose are lemon, orange, grapefruit, bergamot, pear and green notes. Middle notes of rose, magnolia, false jasmine, jasmine, honeysuckle, lily of the valley, base notes, musk, patchouli and amber. Fine. Okay. I'm sure. Whatever. But this purely smells like a rose lemonade with some vanilla in the base to me. Like, again, this is another one that the more it dries down, the more you you get a sense of some kind of vanilla underneath it all. But it's not so vanilla-y as was the comforter that it really bothers me. If you if you know, if you're again, if you're British, I'm not sure if they have Fentimans anywhere else. I feel like it's a very British kind of fancy soda that you get in glass bottles. They have a rose lemonade. And if you imagine that rose lemonade, so you have that kind of rose watery uh, thing going on, but you also have that slightly sharp, but also nicely sweetened sort of cloudy lemonade-y um, flavor, you know. If you can imagine that with like a sweet vanilla in there as well, that is what Rumour 2 Rose smells like. It's actually surprisingly easy to wear despite having um, what to me is is quite a vanilla-y kind of note going on. It's really scrumptious. It's really fresh. It's lovely and summery. It's very, very pretty. I think it's a really, a really safe bet if you like, well, if you like rose and lemon, right? If you like those two things together, this is a very summery, kind of slightly effervescent, yummy smell. Now, then we have, you won't have seen this one yet either. I have actually, I've got a haul video for this, but I haven't put it up yet because I keep, they keep, they keep things, things keep coming up, I should say, that I kind of want to get up, you know. So this is Yardley and this one is Sweet Pea and Bluebell. Let me just check if I've got that the right way around. Um... Oh, it's called Bluebell and Sweet Pea by Ardley. It's a fabulous colour, as you can see. It's really nice. You can get this super cheap. I think I got this from maybe Health Farm for like £4 or something. Now, again, eau de toilettes and these kind of Yardleys don't really last very long. Um, but they are absolutely perfect for this time of year. Now, the notes in this are top notes of citrus, bergamot, lemon, cassis, middle notes, sweet pea, bellflower, jasmine, rose, lily of the valley and peony, base notes, vanilla, woody notes and musk. I don't find it very woody. It's not massively vanilla-y, it's just got a really lovely kind of sweetness. Oh, just sprayed it on my hand. It's just so pretty, this one. It's such a pretty, easy floral. Um, I'm probably going to wear this one this week, to be honest, because like literally I'm just getting a whiff of it and thinking, oh, that's going to be great in the high heat. Mm, I feel like the sweet pea is probably at the top, followed by the bluebell. I'm not getting a huge amount of the other florals, but it does. It, I mean, it pretty much smells like a very gentle, beautiful, colourful, but light floral bouquet. And the citrus is in there, I think, are just keeping it from getting overly floral. It's not screechy at all. It's watery and fresh. It's just, it's very scrummy, this one. It's, again, not long lasting, but it's super nice for this time of year. Like, it's such a, such a pretty perfume. And then, last but not least, I'm going to put this little guy in here because the, yeah, the lasting power of H&M Pear 
is appalling. <laughs> I'm not going to argue that it's got, it hasn't got a good longevity. But it's so fun to wear. It's so perfect for summer. Just this tiny little bottle to keep spritzing on you, to give you a refresher. Again, it doesn't have any notes listed. Quick spray. Woo! Good sprayers. It's, it's pure pear. <laughs> there might be other things in this perfume, but you can't smell them. It smells like pear. However, it, although it definitely, there is definitely a, a vibe of a real pear. There's also very much a vibe of a Haribo sugary, sh slightly sherbetty sweet smell. So it's like, oh, it's just lush. I love this perfume. It is annoying you have to keep respraying it all the time. However, you know, when I get really hot, I quite like respraying everything. I have to respray my clean um, laundry and lavender uh, a lot as well. But I love that perfume. It always makes me feel really like refreshed when I have to keep spraying it. And I feel like that about H&M Pear. Um, out of the four that I bought from H&M, Pear is by miles my favourite of them, you know very backup worthy absolutely love it i just think it's so easy to wear and it's per perfect for this time of year so mm, everything oh, i smell insane right now i've got a million perfumes sprayed all over me but um I, I i hope that there's some things here that might inspire you to get some cheap and cheerful perfumes i think the most expensive thing i have here might actually be the comforter from lush but it is 200 mil so i mean it's an absolute bargain and honestly the lush um perfumes are absolute beasts like they're fully beast mode in terms of like how strong they are and how long they last they're genuinely better than a lot of eau de parfums that i've come across so yeah, I'll be back soon, hopefully, with my next batch. I've just got so I've just got so many. I think I can do at least three of these videos. So yeah, so this is the first high heat. Hopefully I will be back very soon with part two.